In the beginning, he made them male and female, and said, For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother, and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So then, they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let not man separate. Marriage, the beautiful institution that brings together a man and a woman in holy matrimony, happily ever after, or as we like to say, till death do us part. However, these days, that institution is being ravaged by all sorts of problems, seeing homes break up three months, six months, one year. Today on Chapters, we're talking about marriage, and I'm excited to introduce to you the book Zara, our first fiction book on the show. So I think it's going to be a different type of show today. I'm excited to introduce the author of Zara, Olushola Oguche Aguda, an organizing and productivity expert, the co-founder and CEO of Pine Tree Organizers, a company that organizes homes, businesses, and lifestyles. Shola, you are welcome to Chapters. Thank you very much, Tony. I came across your book. Then I started it, okay. and I did not drop it till I finished it. Oh, great. So, <laughs> fantastic story. Thank you. But why did you decide to first to write a book on marriage? And why did you decide to write it as fiction? Because the kinds of books that we write here, it would have been like 10 commandments of marriage. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, well, okay, why marriage, first of all? Okay, so um, I think I'm just passionate about marriage. I'm one of those people that... Um, I in love with love. That's what my mother said. So at 16, she asked me, are you getting married tomorrow? Because I would sit down in front of the TV and be listening to Bimbo de Coya and just, wow. you know, just hear her talk, yes, uh, talking about marriage. And it just was very interesting. And then as I grew up, I realized that marriage was in jeopardy. Hmm. I found out that, um, that what marriage was and what marriage was meant to be uh, were two different things. And then Hollywood had sold us a lie. A big lie. You know, and so I always tell them, how come the book, the movies always end when they get married? But nobody says what happens after marriage. And so I said, you know what? I, I want to write a book about marriage. And honestly, I take no credit because my friends have read the book. A lot of people have read this book. And I said, Shola, how did you know the ideals that were written in this book? How do you know? And so this is where I know that it was purely inspiration from God. Sure. I think God downloaded what he wanted you know, about marriage, what his ideals were about marriage. And so that was why I wrote about marriage. I'd just been passionate about marriage. I saw that marriage was on the decline. Mm. And we, I said, you know what, if I, I, let's, let's write about this. Fiction, because I love fiction. I think it's the easiest okay. way to pass information across. across. Yes, yeah, so anybody would read fiction. It's easy to read fiction. But you know, if it's a serious book, it takes a while. But I said, you know what, let's, and I'd always told myself that I would write fiction in a way that if someone picks the book, they can say I learned one, two, three, four, five. Hmm. So I never didn't just I didn't just want to write fiction for just enjoyment's sake. I wanted to write fiction to pass a lesson across. So and I'll tell you it. that it worked because I did learn maybe one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, oh, ten. Great, 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 great. I'm <laughs> happy. Did. I'm glad. Okay, so for those watching, I have read the book, obviously. Mm -hmm. But tell us about Zara without giving away the story. Just, you know, a summary as you would tell it. Okay, I think that Zara is a lot of things. Apart from marriage, I think Zara has a lot to do with self-discovery. So um, I think I wanted to bring out the fallacy that marriage is the solution to all our problems. You know, yeah. really. And that the fact that if you are not whole, you cannot make another person whole. And so marriage is one plus one is equal to one. You know, really. So it's about this young girl who grew up in a home that, you know, she didn't get all the love and affection that she mm -hmm. would have liked. And she thought that marriage would solve her problems. And then she got married to and found out that, oh, no, that's not going to solve my mm -hmm. problems. And of course, so her challenges, you know, going through marriage and trying to find herself and that didn't work 
of course she stepped away trying to find a life. So it's all about how somebody journeyed from, you know, it takes us through a lot of curves and turns. So it starts yeah. from the nuclear family where she didn't get what she wanted. She got into marriage, she didn't get what she wanted. She left marriage, didn't get what she wanted. And in the end found out that, you know, there's only one place to start in the mm. place of God where you find wholeness and then everything comes together when you're whole. So that's it. Very interesting. Mm. But as I read the book, my question was, how did you weave the story? So I, I, I first said maybe this was based on true life events because you, you, brought up, you brought in so many stories in so many ways. Yes. How did the whole writing come together? Oh, that's a tough one. I don't know. Okay, so writing is a gift. So when we start from that, you know, um, I can't tell. Yeah, so it's a gift. Um, so I think I tried to explore different scenarios. You did explore. Yes, I tried to explore different scenarios. So the first scenario, is Zara's scenario, is, which is like kind of the typical scenario, is the fact that people just even enter marriage without knowing why. You know, so that's the typical scenario of 99.9% .9 of marriages. marriages, yes, so that's one scenario. There's another scenario of someone that had lost a loved one and uh, had to explore, you know. Um, so we don't know Yes, don't. exactly, so that was another scenario. Then there's another scenario of generations, which was very important. The fact that we will repeat the mistakes that have happened before us unless there's something that happens to change a course of direction. Mm. And so this lady had seen her, Richessa had seen her parents make the same mistakes vowed that she would not make the mistakes and, and got then, into her marriage yes, and did exactly, and the, did same exactly the same thing and is that not typical really mm. and so those i think that what happened was that i i wanted to bring out three or four different kinds of scenarios okay, so and before you started you knew i wanted to talk about this and yes this and this yes and this. yes okay. yes there were points i wanted to address and then we found how it comes together is now where inspiration comes from. But yes, those were the points that I wanted to address. You're really divinely inspired. You no, know, I can take no credit. In fact, I look at the book myself. I said, okay, you wrote it. I said, mm, somebody must have been working. <laughs> it wasn't me. Really. So, yes. But in your opinion, how would you define marriage? Okay, so I think that, you know, marriage is, first of all, I would say that it is... Um, suicidal to define marriage without bringing the concept of God. Mm. Because, you know, if you want to find out why something was created, you must go to the person that created it. Mm. And we know that God created marriage in his mind. He, very simply, he said, Adam can't do all the things I need Adam to do. Adam needs a help. And he says, I will make a woman. Now, people think that that means that the woman is just the man's help. No, they're supposed to help each other. It's a symbiotic relationship. And so, really, what God was saying is, I have a purpose for you. And that is really the critically most important thing. So you know, because it's critically most important. Yes. Yeah. Just to let you know that. The true purpose of marriage is God needs you and I to help our spouses mm. to fulfill the reason why we were created. First purpose. And so when you do not understand that, then why are we talking about marriage? Mm. And so marriage is to help two people fulfill purpose. First thing. Second thing comes is to help the two, two people fulfill, fulfill purpose. purpose. Yes. And so because you can't do it on your own. So God says, you know what, Adam, do this, do this. He said, but for Adam, I couldn't find a helpmate. I couldn't find a companion. Purpose first, companionship second. So you see that feelings cannot be the true test of marriage, really. So marriage is helping God saying, I need to do ABC. You know, you can do it on your own, you can do it on your own. But if I bring these two together, you know what, we can, we can do it. And that's the, full, the first purpose of marriage. And then after that comes companionship, after that comes godly children. You know, so that's the, the cycle that it takes. And remember that marriage is, the Bible says that it is the, it's related to, or it can be compared to Christ and the church. So mm -hmm. it's too significant. I, I think that is, not I think, I know is the most important institution on the surface of the earth. Certainly. And the reason why we're failing right now is that marriages are failing. Because me, a marriage fails, what we've said is that a family cannot work. And me, a family cannot work, the bedrock of society is destroyed. Yes. Yeah, so when people want to get married, the first thing I ask is that, where are you going? Hmm. If you don't know where you're going, how do you know who to take on the journey with you? And so you see, for you to know where you're going, you have to ask yourself, who am I? So you see, the whole process is, actually very, more, a lot of detailed. I said love ha wears glasses. <laughs> yes, love has started wearing glasses. It's no longer you blind. You have to see well. Exactly, and which is why self-discovery. You have to know who you are 
and then now ask yourself, who can help me on this, on journey? this journey? Yes. So that's how I would define marriage. So when you start from there, you can see that it's a bit more technical. And so it's not just the white dress. It's not even the white. It's not even more. The, it's more than the, the feelings and the ring, you know, the and the butterflies. And the butterflies. So someone says, so what happens to the butterflies? That can't I judge? What happens? I said, my darling, it's called. You see, the butterflies progress and it becomes something stronger and deeper. Mm -hmm. Really, that's the truth. And you ask anybody that has been married for a while, they'll tell you butterflies fantastic, but that's not the true basis it's of not, marriage. No, 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 not no. at all. Mm -mm. After a while, the butterflies. If so, two things happen, and this is why people say I, I don't love you anymore. What they're saying is I don't feel butterflies anymore, really. But you can't just love is a doing word. So you can't just say I don't love you. What you're saying when you say I don't love you, you said I choose. What you're saying is I choose, I choose not, not to, to love, love you. you. I love where this conversation is going, but we have to go on a short break. We'll be right back, still talking about the book, Zara, Don't Go Anywhere. You're welcome back to Chapters, and today we are talking marriage. Through our first fiction book, I will keep emphasizing this because I'm excited, Zara, written by Olushola Oguche Aguda. And so, before we went on the break, you know, we are talking about um, marriage is a purpose, yes. and people coming together to fulfill that purpose. Mm -hmm. But obviously, and I think you do some marriage counseling mm -hmm. as well, yeah. and you've seen all sorts of mm -hmm. issues. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that marriages break up so fast these days? See, because what, like I said, the world has told us a lie, Hollywood has told us a lie, that all I need to do is really like you. And so two people should just really, really like Thank each you. other. And that like is what we have termed love. And immediately we really like each other and we are in love, then we should get married. And unfortunately, love is not a feeling. No, love is not a feeling. Meanwhile, it's a bit deeper than that. Like I said before, it is purpose. So first of all, what you should be asking yourself is, who am I? Do I know who I, who I, who I am? What am I on earth for? Everybody must ask themselves that question. In fact, that is the reason why you should get up from bed every morning. Mm. You know, and as, even as little as my kids are, I tell them, God has a plan for you. God created you for a purpose. You need to find out what it is because that's the meaning of life. Identity. Yes. And so when you ask yourself, who am I? What is my purpose? And then the third thing you should be asking now is how do I fulfill that purpose? Mm. So when you meet someone that you really like, so the first place it starts, there must be a mutual attraction, for instance. So yes, I like you, you like me, but they're, they're checklists. So my husband teases me because when I met him and he said, oh, I like you. And I said, okay, fine, fine. So I brought out this exercise book and I started asking questions. Number one, what is your vision? Number, you can imagine how he said. So felt. you knew this, <laughs> well, you'll be 10 years married. Yes. So you mm. knew this 10 years ago. Yes, I knew this 10 years ago. Wow. I knew this 10 years ago. So I asked him, and I, so you can imagine, I had like a whole like, list of questions to ask him. Now, the way I went, went about that, we maybe kind of the question, but <laughs> not really. I think after a while, I said, Shola, you really want, do you want to do this or you don't want to do this? But I asked so him. So how should one go about it then? Well, I think, I think that there are stages. So the first phase is, yes, I like you. You like me, that's fine. So that means that we have some mutual interest. The second thing is fact finding. So the first thing is more friendship. I like you, you like me, we're just friends. So by the time you guys are getting close, you know that the guy likes you or you like the guy. You need to begin to ask some questions. And those questions come out in, in friendship. Normal yes, normal conversation. What do you want to do with your life? What do you think your life is about? The truth is that we don't always have the clear picture, but we always have an inkling. You know, there's something that points us in the same direction. So for instance, what my husband told me he wanted to achieve 10 years ago hasn't changed. The mm. way the way that's turned out, yes, the, but the, the big picture hasn't it's still, the it's still the same. And so because I saw the big picture, I said, okay, you know what? I'm going to work with you wow. on this. And there are values, there are core values. What are, so what are your core values? There are some things that are sacrosanct. So you say, this I can do without, this I can do mm. without. So I tell people, I say, okay, you mm -hmm. want to have a career, but this man wants to marry someone that he wants to be a stay-at-home mom. Nothing wrong with both of them, but, but why are I you two together? And it direction. is unfair for you to marry him and insist that, that you, you want, want to, to go work. to work. He was clear. Mm. So why don't you just say, you know what, this is what I want. And if it's not mm. working for you, then it's a hard decision. But those are the kind of decisions that should be hard. So we're increasingly finding out that, that these decisions are not being, people are not talking about these things. 
talking, talking, talking is what's supposed to happen in dating and courtship. In fact, by the time you say you are getting married, you should have talked so much hmm. that by the time you're courting, we're just saying, how do we handle the things we've talked about? We're we not discovering things. Yes. We're not discovering things in courtship. So I always say, so what is, why, back to your question, why are marriages breaking up? You know, we, we, we don't know who we are. We don't know where we're going. We base marriage based on only on feelings. People are increasingly living a life without purpose. Mm. Um, we're getting more selfish as a people. Yep. It's about me, 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 me. And it's a lot of work. Wow. It's a lot it of, is a lot of it's work. It's a lot of work. Yeah. So I'll take us into the book now. And what I want us to just bring out some concepts you okay. sort of touched on in the book and then look at them from a real life perspective. Okay, great. Now, one of them was, as you called it, the generational, not a curse, yeah. but just the generational flow, yeah. so to speak. <laughs> yeah. How one generation affects another. And yes. from the book from Zara and her husband to their daughter, mm -hmm. Rachessa, and her husband, mm -hmm. how our past will always affect us, subconsciously yes. Yes. or consciously. Mm -hmm. How can we not allow where we're coming from to determine who we become? Okay. So we are all a function of our backgrounds. So that's the first thing we should do. We should know. Your background, you're who you are because of how you were raised mm -hmm. and what you went through. Now, two things happen when you have a background. You actually, the first thing I think is to come to a full realization. I don't think as a people we think a lot. Mm. And you see, when you don't think, you don't, I think we're too much in a hurry. So we wake up and we're in a hurry. You don't pause, you know, and to say, to just, you know how it is, you have to try and get your bearing right and say, what is it? What am I about? And the f why you should do that is that you need to, at every point in time, assess your life and ask yourself, how did I get here? Hmm. Yesterday creates today. And so we're a function of our background. And because we're a function of our background, it will affect our decisions. So let's give an example. You come from a background that is not so fantastic. Do you have to have, um, do you have to recreate that? I don't think no. so. But do you even realize? That's the first step. Yes. So that realization. Yes, self-realization. That this is where I'm coming from. And a conscious decision not to make the same mistake. So a self-realization, then you ask yourself, what went wrong? Because it's not just for you to realize. So I came from a bad background. Uh -huh. That's, that's just, that's abstract. You have to ask yourself, why? Okay, was it that the marriage wasn't right? Mm. Wasn't that they shouldn't have been together? Mm. Was it, when you understand why, then, it is, then you can tell yourself this mistake will... And won't. then begin to see yes. where you need to make your correction. Yes, yes. So th that's the simple thing. You, first of all, you, I think consciously as a people, I tell people every day, take out time before you go to bed. Think about the day. Mm. How did it go? What did I do well? What do I have to change? Take a journal and write it down. You know, so it's the same thing about your life. So ask yourself, how did I get here? What are the things that have happened that have shaped me so far? And then how can I ensure that, you know, these mistakes forward. don't happen again? So like I said, you know, most of the time, if your grandma got divorced and your mom got divorced, you get it, oh no, there's a curse, really, <laughs> following, they're following you from the village. You know, there's one place in the village. Where sometimes, yes, there are curses, but most times it's just the fact that we repeat the mistakes of the people that have gone ahead of us because we don't know Otherwise, and we don't know. Especially better. when we vow, I will not do yes. that. So, so, not yes, but, like we, that. but you know, we vow without knowing why. Mm. So when you vow without knowing why, then you can't change it. But if you realize, okay, you know what, I think that my dad didn't spend enough time with us as, as, as a father. As father. For example, my dad did, daddy you did. <laughs> but, you know, if you said that is why, then you know that, okay, and that is why probably we're not close to him, but I want my children to be close, close to, to me. me. Therefore, I will spend time with children. How? By A, taking them to school every morning. B, spending Saturdays at home with them. Do you understand? So that's, that's, I know what I say is that God is too organized, too methodical, so precise for us to think that we can, we can just live our lives, lives anyhow and then just 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 get the results that we want so those are the kind of decisions and so you see that these are the kind of conversations that should be happening in marriage i mean in relationships in relationships yeah so it's they're serious business hey, no 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 they're not it's happening serious business you know when they come to me sometimes it's very funny i just smile at them and you know i just ask are you ready of course we are very ready <laughs> i'm like okay let's see let's see mm. wow Hard work. It's hard work. Another thing I forgot to tell you about marriage. See, apart from marriage being about purpose, marriage yeah, in the end will make you more like God. Hmm. It will. In the end. It will. And you see, I think well, that... The fruits of the Spirit will yes. be Yes. And so, it's very typical. In the morning, I'm going to use myself because I'm very organized. 
I have just done something in a particular way. Then I call my, it's all just, uh, the first thing you want to do is let the person have a piece of your mind and say, excuse me, can you just, can we have a conversation? <laughs> is this how, is this how? And then you feel something restrain you and say, not now, mm. or patience. Mm. That's what we're talking about. Yeah. And so, am I saying don't say anything? No, I'm saying that's not the right time. And so when everything is happening, you're having a cup of tea and eating just some cake, you just say, you know, do you know, and then you know the way you say it, you know, you know, I, 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 so instead of saying, why did you just scatter the place, or you really scatter the place, or what, which is the best thing to say? <laughs> you know, I go like, you know, ah, and I was when I came back, I was so tired, ah, and I saw that the place was scattered, so I kind of felt really bad. Can you imagine? Ah, what kind of conversation is that? <laughs> you want to have the opposite conversation. But guess what? That's the one that produces the results. Mm -hmm. That's the yeah. one that produces the results. You go up in arms, and then the next thing, the person is going to tell you that, no, it's also my house. Can I just do it the way Maybe I want to? I want to do yes, this. and both of you are right, really. So it's, it's, it's in the end, I, I, which is why I said love is, what, what is love? I think when we define what love is, then you can, marriage will work. Hmm. So it is what? It's um, kind and patient and, and what? Faithful and gentle and has self-control and has long suffering. And you don't like <laughs> no, 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 no. So when you think about all of that's really what love is. But do you know the secret? The more you begin to practice that, those butterflies you're looking for, they bubble they back. Bubble they back bubble up. back with immediate alacrity, if yes, I can use the word. They do. But if you don't practice, they, you, 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 in the end, you just wake up, you know, like Hollywood. I don't just feel that way it, anymore. It's never different. Yeah, you start saying, I don't feel that way. Remember, I'm like, these people, you know, and if you had the irreconcilable differences, this is not the man I'm like, mm -hmm. that's the man you married. He changed. You say, yeah, that's what he changed. It's not the same, <laughs> you know, really. And marriage demands that you be a better person. Hmm. It, it demands, and that's been about marriage. You, you come and you say, you know what, I want to work on this person. And God says, I want to deal with you. And so as you begin to make the right decisions, that person has no other choice than to, also than to align, really. But it's not, it's not the easiest thing to do. And that's not what somebody wants to hear, you know, when you say you're in love. But unfortunately, they are hearing it today. <laughs> and they'll keep hearing it when we come back from this break. Nope. So much more on marriage. We'll be right back. You're welcome back to Chapters. And if you're just tuning in, we've been talking about marriage through the eyes of the book Zara, Love and Second Chances. And I still have the author with me, Olushola Oguche Aguda. Mm -hmm. So now I want us to talk about a very deep issue in marriage, mm -hmm. forgiveness. Okay. Mm -hmm. Forgiveness, especially like in this book, when things like adultery yeah. have gone on, mm -hmm. emotional abuse, verbal abuse, mm -hmm. those kinds of things that you have to almost become Jesus yeah. to yeah. forgive. How would you, for someone watching who has mm. gone through that and we say, you what, I can't forgive this man, mm. I can't forgive this mm. woman, this and this has been done. Mm -hmm. How would you cancel those kinds of issues? Mm. There's, and there's no easy, I don't, I don't think it will ever be easy. Mm. There's no easy way to forgive. There's a lot, like you said, adultery, um, emotional abuse, a lot has gone on and so, you know, I've always learned to go to God for the tough things. Hmm. The things, because the truth is, I asked myself, in fact, there was somebody that read that book and said I was really unfair to allow Zara and it, well, let's not go there, but you know what I mean. And that I, I, that, that, that was unfair, that what I was asking for, you know, because he said, because that, that has been me. And what, I'm, what you're asking for is tough. And I said, well, the truth is that it's tough, and I agree. But what, what's the alternative, not to forgive? You see that as long as you don't forgive, you hurt yourself. Mm -hmm. You can't fully mm -hmm. let go. Which you she was doing. Yeah, which she was doing. You can't fully let go. You can't really live your life. You still find that you are not complete. Even when everything was working for her, yeah, there was still there was something. Still something. Yeah, something missing. And so it's a tough one. And times like that, you know, I, I, you just go to God and say, look, I can't do it on my own. There's no way. I need you to help me. And I, you know, the God will help you. Mm -hmm. The first place is even to be willing to forgive. To forgive. Yes. So the truth is there's nothing that has been done to you that is worse than what Jesus went through. And so... You know, I always say that. <laughs> as hard as forgiveness can yeah, be, truly speaking. Really, really, really. And if Jesus could... I'm not saying it's easy because I heard people say, you know, it's easy for you to say. It's not an easy thing to do. But guess who is free in the end? You. Sometimes mm. I say forgive for yourself, not mm. for the other person, for yourself. 
you know, let that person, the freedom, the, the peace, you know, is irreplaceable. Mm. And so it's tough, but sometimes, and I, and I say, you know what, God says, when we're vulnerable, it's okay, come to me. So sometimes say, you know what, I'm upset right now, this is not what I want to do, but if you will help me. And you know, that's sometimes all what God wants to hear. And so forgiveness is not an option. It's not something that we can negotiate on. And say maybe I would, I would no, not. No. You have to. It's not an option. I think the toughest thing for most people is actually to have, not they'll tell you I'm forgiven, but I can't remain in the marriage. That's usually what happens. Do you understand? After all of that, you hear people say, I can't. Because I almost can't look at him yes, or her yes, and, and have the same feelings. Mm, yes. Which uh, is why forgiveness is divine. Uh, it's really not, it's not like it's your power that no, woke up no, and said, I forgive you. No, no, no. No, no. I think and for one of the characters said the toughest thing for her, she forgave the man, but the fact that she could not, she said, you ask me for too much to continue to go and revisit, to go and do that. It's to say, it's tough, but you know, for me, that's the greatest miracle. Because mm. if that happens, it just shows that and anything is possible. Anything is wow. possible. And you give the other person a new lease of life. Of life. Yes. So, I don't know. There's no easy way. It's deep. It's deep. You just have to do it. <laughs> you just have to do it. It's deep. It's deep. There's no other way around it. Forgive. Try <laughs> to forgive. <laughs> Work on it. Pray yeah, about pray it. Pray about it. And I think that, you see, it, 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 there are sort of stages. I found out that you want, somebody has hurt you, but it's really bad. Just start praying about it first. Don't it, see, the way God is, God understands us. And I like him. He knows that. I love God because he knows that we're not robots. Exactly. So he's not expecting... Exactly. So you start praying about it. I say, God, this is how I feel. I really feel, do you know, I feel bad. I don't feel good. This is how. It will shock you. In a few days, all of a sudden, it's easier. It to. Yes, it's easier. You know, all of a sudden, you can wake up one day. Not all of a sudden. After a while, you can wake up and say, I truly let go. And that process is necessary. It's it's for your, especially for yourself. Yes, yes, it is necessary. Wow. It's terrible. Okay. We'll get there. We're growing in these things. <laughs> yeah. Another thing I liked, which I personally find is becoming not an issue, but something I see is, you know, between the marriage between Shane, Richessa and Shane, mm -hmm. and you know, where she said she had made her husband God, and yeah. she expected that the husband would be everything. everything. And everything. obviously, he fell below I think it's the expectations. <laughs> Why put so much pressure on a man? Yeah, because that's what Hollywood and the world has told us, that your dreams, all your dreams will come true when you marry. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that's why there's so much emphasis on getting married. I absolutely think marriage is one of the greatest gifts on earth. Mm. I, so I, I don't, I've found a little else comparable to it. However, I do not think that because you do not marry, there's anything wrong, there's with, anything you. wrong with you. I do not think that because you do not marry, you're out of God's, um, God is upset with you. Or you're out of his or will. You're out of his will. No, no, no. God is divine. He is sovereign. He knows the end of a thing mm. from the beginning. And so if for some reason you haven't have married and you've done you know, the things that are, you, you know to do, then, then really just wait for God's timing. But because society has made it feel like if you're not married, then there's something wrong with you. So people start getting married for the wrong reason, wrong reason, and they just think, you know what, if I get married, if I can just get married, not the way we feel like if we can just step out of this country, our life will be fine. <laughs> you know how we feel like that way, if I can just get that visa. I know how it is. That's the same way. If I can just get married, and then you know what, that's the first thing that shocks you. Ah, this person can't do it. It's unfair. Yeah. So as much as for me, it, the biggest thing I needed even to push is that you must know who you are and you must understand that you are deeply, undeniably loved by a God who will love you beyond anything mm. on the surface of the earth. Mm. When you are whole like that, as in, there's nothing else, as in you're a blessing, you're a gift to whoever finds you. And so, you know, normally I tell my husband, I said, Jelly, I was sitting in my house. You, you said you wanted to marry. When I say that, it's just really because I know who I am. Yeah. I am a gift to you. Your life, and I said, yeah. I said, your life is better because of me. And he said, yes, vice versa. I said, yes, if you don't want to blow your trumpet, I'm blowing yeah, my, blow my trumpet. <laughs> your life is, and that is, and when you realize that, it's even easier to forgive. Yes. It's easier to say, you know yes. what, it's unfair. And yes. so what happens is that we put pressure on our loved ones to be all. They can't be all. They can't, even they can't it can be all. Yes, am I saying that they shouldn't do their different roles? Yes, and in different homes, different mm -hmm. roles for different people. people. It differs, yes, because they, I found exactly. that the traditional... There's also no one way fits no, all, no, one no, marriage no. fits all. Some homes, is the, there's a traditional. Some homes, is both people. Some homes, the, you guys have to find the blend that mm. works for you. But the first 
condition for marriage is wholeness. Fantastic. It's wholeness. If you're whole, every other thing will fall into place. Wow. Really, so. We can go on and on about this book. I mean, there's so many things, widows, mm. like, you know, Zara is such a deep book. And I like it, like we said, because it's fiction. So it's a story. So you can read it and enjoy reading the story. It's not the 10 rules of marriage or the 10 rules of what not to do in marriage. <laughs> it's a nice story that we'll enjoy reading. But where can people get copies of the book? So it's in Latana, it's in um, Pataba. Right now, it's in Terra Culture, it's on Amazon, it's on Barnes and Nobles, it's on Cobble. Yeah, so yeah, that kind quite of place. Yeah, quite a number of places. You walk into any of those bookstores I've mentioned. Go online, you know, it's all available for you. But I just want to say thank you. Thank you for having for me. For being such a lovely guest. And we look forward to many more books. This is yes. the first. Mm, many more. Many more many are already books. on the way. And maybe even a film, a Zara film. Mm, yes, let's watch out. Many things are coming. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. It was really, really great being here. Fantastic. Mm. It's been such a lovely episode today, talking about the book Zara and using that to talk about marriage. And like we said, marriage is truly the most important institution, truly, that God created. Man and woman being together, whole, separately, and coming together to form a complete whole. It is our desire that every marriage is fruitful and that every marriage is based on the foundation and the principles that God created for it to be. Thank you for watching. And I, if you want to contact Zara, uh, Shola, sorry, not Zara, you know, and you want to reach out to her, your, e your email address, shola at sholaaguda.org. And you know, if you know that you have challenges in your marriage and you want some help in that area, shola at sholaaguda. Org. Thank you so much for watching and until the next episode, God bless you.